Why does i equal the square root of minus 1 in complex numbers? Well here we have this standard Cartesian representation of a complex number with the real part and the imaginary part. And this is the symbol i that takes this value here, square root minus 1. And we can rewrite it in polar form where r is the magnitude of the complex number and theta is the phase. And if you're not familiar with this exponential form of writing the complex number, then you'll find a link in the show notes for this video to another video that explains this exponential form for complex numbers. But to now use it to understand this property here that i equals the square root of minus one, let's start by considering the case when r equals one. Then we have the complex number e to the i theta. Now let's think about that graphically. So we can actually plot this on a Cartesian form a plot where we have the real part in the horizontal direction and the imaginary part in the vertical. We sometimes call this the complex plane. Now where is this? Well, it's got a magnitude of one. So that means the distance from the origin equals one. And it's got a phase of theta. So this distance around here, let's uh, say that that equals one. And this distance around here is theta. That's where the value x is on this complex plane. Okay, now let's think about its real value and its imaginary value. The real value is the length of this, which is r, in this case it's one, times cos of theta. So this value here is cos of theta. And the value here in the imaginary is the sine of theta for the same reason. So this is sine of theta. The magnitude is one and sine of theta gives you that height on this triangle. Okay, and this immediately gives us an expression that we can write down. We can write that e to the i theta equals cos, because that's the real part, cos of theta, plus i sine of theta. Okay, now let's put a particular case. Let's think of the particular example when theta equals pi. Now, where is this on this diagram? That's theta equals pi. Well, if as theta increases, if you increase theta gradually, this value x will move around in a circle. So there's a, what we call the unit circle because this value of r that we have equals one. So I can draw a circle here. This is my best approximation to a circle freehand. This is the circle that the value e to the i theta lives on for all the different values of theta. So when theta equals pi, that's over here. That's this value over here. Okay, so when theta equals pi, let me write this down here, e to the i pi. Then we have the real part, the cos theta equals minus one. And the imaginary part, the sine theta, which is the vertical, equals zero. Okay, so this gives us an equation. This one here is known as Euler's equation, and this one here is known as Euler's identity. So now we can use this to break this component up here, just do a sort of a mathematical trick. We can just do i to the pi divided by two, all squared. So all we've done here is to divide the pi by two and then multiply by two. And we can write it in this way here. And this still equals minus one, of course. So now what we have in here is e to the i pi on two. Now, where is that on our circle? Well, that is a number inside the brackets here is a number, complex number, which is at the angle pi on two. That's the value up here. And that value has a real value which equals zero. So inside the brackets here, we're now gonna have zero for the real part plus i times the com complex part, which is going to equal one. And so now we've got this thing squared, so that's i times one equals minus one. So now from this equation here, clearly you can see that zero plus i squared. So we've got i squared equals minus one. And that implies, of course, that i equals the square root of minus one. So by understanding complex numbers, by using this particular case when the magnitude equals one, and then looking at the value of theta at pi, 
Realizing we can represent that as pi on 2, we manage to establish that i must equal the square root of minus 1. So hopefully this has given you more insights into the complex number, and in particular the complex variable i. If it has, uh, give the video a like. It helps others to find the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And as I said before, you can check out the show notes. You'll find a link to a web page that has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.